go here. So we'll have a quick look at how to use a bipolar transistor as a switch. Well, let's get into it. So anyway, here's our simple switch circuit. And it looks like this. So we have a MJ3055 with a minimum beta of 20. So that's the amplification factor of the on a base to emit a current compared to the collector current. And then I'm using a, a lamp here, which is a 6 volt lamp related at 500 milliamp, milliamps, feeding it with 6 volts just for illustration purposes. And here, I mean, usually one designs these circuits like this, and then you have the 0 0.6 volts over the base to emitter um, part, and then you have 5.4 volts left go into the um, base. And then I just chucked in a, what one would usually consider as being good enough for, for a switch. So we uh, look at the 400, uh, 470 ohm resistor and see what happens. So let me put it on. And um, then we, um, we see that the base uh, current is 9 milliamps and the saturation on the um, transistor itself is um, a little bit under 1 volt and um, then one starts to think a bit and actually what one should actually do to dimension this is the one should the objective is to get as close as possible to the 500 milliamps. Now it's feeding 350 milliamps. So it's a bit lower and then of course when we have a feed volt of 6 volts we're going to have a dissipation over the transistor so we're going to lose a little bit of voltage. So I want the voltage drop to be as little as possible over the transistor part. So then we go back and we calculate to actually have, um, if you take the 20 as the minimum amplification, then we want to have 25 milliamps going to the um, base, around 25 milliamps. And that would indicate a uh, 216 ohm resistor, so that's 220. Would be more optimum for this case. Because what you actually want to do is you want to saturate the transistor, but you don't want to, on the other hand, you don't want to be um, feeding a base emitter current that is clearly insane and will just create internal losses. So let's switch to the to the um, other. So this is the 220 um, ohm resistor. And as you see the base current has increased to 20 milliamps and um, we get 370 milliamps going into the lamp and the lamp looks much happier and plus you get it has dro and dropped the um, set and the voltage saturation over the transistor has has been dropped also a little bit so this is a kind of a the way you do the, the, the design is you look at the um, what is your going to be the 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 load current and then you look look up the um, minimum beta for the transistor and then you use that to define a base um, current and then you based on the supply voltage you calculate a base resistor and, um, yeah, and then you, you test it out. You can of course make the base resistor even smaller but uh, there are there's a kind of a boundary where it uh, no longer makes sense and as I said you don't want to be using all your power to um, push the base on the transistor you actually want to be able to use the um, current and voltage or the the losses for you know for your actual load not burning it up in the transistor so that's a brief introduction into using a transistor as a switch so let's have a look at a side case of switching which is to switch an inductive load so 
So it looks like this. We have um, the same transistor. And we've actually added a coil, 10 millihenry coil. And then um, we're powering it from a one and a half hour off volt battery, just for safety reasons. And we've got a digital signal coming in, um, 0 to 5 volts through a 1 kilo resistor to the base to switch it on and off. And then we're measuring the voltage over the transistor with the scope. And um, the reason we're using the battery is that it's um, kind of low current and um, low voltage. Because the when you switch an inductive load and when you try and when you switch it on, it's okay. But when you try and switch it off, then you get these very big um, spikes because it's trying to continue to um, continue to keep the circuit alive, basically. So the voltage at the point where the um, disconnect is occurring jumps up. So you gotta get this. Um, you get that nasty spike, and um, if you have, uh, if you would have a more reasonable circuit, then of course you won't be powering it for one and a half, and probably the inductance you're um, controlling will probably be larger than um, 10 millihenry. So then, of course, this spike can get very large, and it could actually exceed the um, capability of the transistor and blow it up and then if it short circuits it might actually then short circuit into your control circuitry and blow that up or it'll go into the supply wires and then blow up something else so what you need to do is you need to add a protection diode to actually cut that spike down to a reasonable level. Now this spike probably continues even further up, it's just that the oscilloscope isn't fast enough to, um, to actually get captured. So, turn off the control. places indicated in the drawing. We can slow it up again. So, and then as you see it dampens the um, the spike when it's trying to shut down. So you don't get dangerous over voltages. And as I said that this is a this is kind of a safe this is a safe circuit, but I mean under normal conditions you actually have higher supply voltages and probably an inductance if it's a, re a relay which hasn't got a built-in diode then, um, or a solenoid or something then the, the spikes will be much larger and, um, it is actually relatively easy to destroy transistors if one um, doesn't have that protection diode so I hope you found this informative um, please consider subscribing hit the like button if you thought the video was worth it uh, merch is available just like to buy me a cup of coffee the links are in the comments all the contributions will go towards developing the channel and uh, see you in the next one